The fastest man in the world just said this. You know, the thing that hurts me the most is that I have to watch the NBA Finals and they have world champion on their head. World champion of what? First and foremost, this was his winning pose after winning us gold. Noise. Second, my wife would argue I'm faster than him. Giggity. But third, to address his point, how can NBA champions be world champions when it's an American league? Well, I could be annoying and point out that the Toronto Raptors are also in the NBA, thus making it an international league, but I don't want to be annoying in this video. Last year at FIBA, United States, we lost to Germany. So how could we, the US, think our NBA players are the best in the world? Exquisite question, good sir. Let's take a closer look at that German team we lost to. Here's a fun game. Type any of their players into a Google search engine and then add on NBA at the back of it. What do you think you'll find? He plays for the NBA, he plays for the NBA, he plays for the... They all play for the NBA. At FIBA, Serbia took second while well, we took fourth. And if you didn't know, second is better than fourth. But I've discovered a pattern. He plays for the NBA, he plays for the NBA, he plays for the NBA. They all, all of Team Serbia plays for the NBA. Third place was Canada, again. Third place is better than fourth place. And wouldn't you know it, these are all NBA players. What an intriguing pattern I've discovered. Almost like if you win the NBA championship, you've played all the best players in the world, thus making you world champions. The only real difference between an NBA game, a FIBA game, and an Olympic game is the jerseys. You're still gonna be playing the same exact players that you do all season long in the NBA. This just doesn't happen in basketball. It happens all throughout the Olympic school. The Swedish pole vaulter who broke records and took home gold? Uh-oh, spaghetti yo. Even when we aren't winning, we're still winning. Every winter and summer Olympics, our journalists write nice puff pieces about the American citizens playing for other teams. It's the only way we're gonna get fair competition. If you're like me, you probably have a raging hard on for the US and know for a fact we are the best. But why are we the best at the Olympics? No one has more golds, more silvers, or more bronze than us, but why? How is it that we always win the Olympics? Except in 2008, when China cheated and got more gold medals than us, they obviously cheated to get more gold medal than us. Don't trust China, China is asshole. No, I'm not butthurt, you're butthurt. But the simple answer is we have a lot of money and a large population, so it's easy to find and fun athletes to compete in the Olympics. But there's another reason, sexism. For the last four Olympics, Team USA has sent more women than and men to the Olympics. Our women quite often succeed where our men fell, like in soccer or gymnastics. Side note, I was recently watching handball in the Olympics and this happened. This looks a lot like soccer, but it's called handball. You know, maybe they should call soccer football. What have I become? I hate admitting when those Eurotards are right. Anyways, tangent over, as I was saying, a key reason why we dominate at the Olympics is Title IX. If you don't know what Title IX is, it's a law that passed in 1972 that forces schools to fund women's sports equal to men's sports. 50-50 funding is the law. For decades, we've funded female sports like no other country. And in those decades, we've created many professional female athletes that have gone on, I don't know where I'm going with that. So when you spend decades doing this, you raise multiple generation of female athletes that are superb. Female athletes that can outcompete underfunded competition, like Africa, all the Middle East, most of South America, pretty much everywhere in Asia except two countries. The competition pool for male athletes runs deep from every country, not so much for the female teams. They fund their female sports less, so there's just less competition for us to go up against. If other countries cared about their women as much as we care about ours, then maybe our women would win less golds. So secretly, I'm rooting for sexism on the global stage. We get the most medals, because we're the best. Duh. And you can trust me when I say that because do I look biased in any way whatsoever? But also sexism from other countries plays a big role in that. I tried to explain this to my wife's friends the other day and they just said it's because men suck, women rule. And every day I grow to hate women more and more and fully realize that being gay 
definitely not a choice. I don't know, someone's gonna be like, this Olympics needs an asterisk because Russia isn't there. Actually, we've dominated ever since the first Olympics. We won the first Olympic. We are! We dominate in every event. Except shooting, yes I know, insert your stupid joke, it wasn't in a school or little John reference here. Russia has never won the Olympics. Soviet Union has won a couple, but it pales in comparisons to the amount that Americans have won. Even when they do compete, we still dunk on them in every way possible, but Russians are still competing. The country of Russia has been banned from the Olympics, but their athletes can still compete under AIN. It's for individual, neutral athlete, whatever, but French is a dumb backwards language, so the initials don't line up. This means Russians are still winning medals. They just don't get to add that tally to Russia as a country. Speaking of dominance, did you know in 2024, Team America won gold for an event in 2022 Winter Olympics? Suck it, Russia. Thank you for cheating. Just a fun fact for you, Michael Phelps, a single American athlete, has more medals by himself than 162 countries. I do have one complaint about the Olympics though, and it's that Australia uses green and gold for their team jerseys. Brazil already exists. It gets confusing whenever you're watching Brazil versus Australia because they're dressed the same. Why can't they just do what Netherlands did with orange? You know who else wears orange? No one, that's the point. Take notes, Australia. Even your next door neighbors, they wear black and white, so they stand out. Just pick different colors. During the skating event, <laughs> One of the skaters in between before and after his runs, he would juggle. Speaking of those kangaroos, they have the third largest team in the Olympics. They're a powerhouse in sports. The country only has like 26 million people, and yet they out-earn medals of countries three, four, five, or even 10 times bigger than them. They're punching way above their weight. And as America's true greatest ally, Australia, I'm proud of those kangaroos. I did notice something odd during this Olympics. It's common during track and field events, after you win, you run to the stands and then you, like your friends and family, they'll throw the flag to you, but quite often they don't catch it and it just hits the ground and no one complains. Or like this American cyclist who won gold and immediately fell down with the American flag on the ground and no one complains. To be clear, I'm not complaining. I just find it interesting that a lot of people find it offensive when the American flag touches the ground, but there's this unwritten law in the flag code that says if you want gold for your country, then it's okay if the flag touches the ground. No one gets butt mad. No one complains about this, not even the boomers. The lady in this photo, Kristen Faulkner, so she has a wild Olympic story. So she first started cycling like seven years ago and then she was supposed to be an alternate for Team USA. She wasn't even gonna go, but then there was a last minute trade out where they needed her to step up and compete for Team USA. And she won the first cycling medal for America, or first gold medal in cycling for America in 40 years. In the past, IOC has told the athletes that they shouldn't be shipwinking each other, but this year, they got rid of that rule and they provided the Olympians with 300,000 condoms. Now, if you do the math on that, there's about 10,500 athletes. This year, it was 50% men, 50% women. So roughly 5,000 athletes were expected to go through 300,000 condoms, which is 60. That's a lot of shaboying over 18 days. The Olympics are just one of the most insane things and an accomplishment for humanity in general. There's over... I forget what it is. There's over 200 countries that compete. And when you get these thousands upon thousands of people from every country, every culture speaking, every, every language, they come together for two weeks and there's no problems. Everyone just gets along. Even after they finish, the losers still hug the winners. The winners still hug the losers. I didn't lose my train of thought, shut up. They even mimic each other after they win. Look at these two examples. It's that Turkish dude who just rolled up some middle-aged dude not wearing any of the fancy robot stuff and took, took silver in one second. He beat all these young kids wearing all this stupid gear. Good for him. Sometimes South Korea and North Korea even enter the Olympics together, just as Korea. Now, with the Olympics on its last day and coming to a close, you're probably wondering who won. And even though I'm biased and I would like to say America because we got the most medals, the real winner was Japan. Sky, dreams take to the night.
colors blaze our way, destiny in sight. Heroes come alive, power in their eyes. Last thing I learned about while I was editing in this is that since Russia was banned from the Olympics, they tried to do their own Olympics called the BRICS Games, and it was quite embarrassing with the turnout. Get dunked on Russia.